Okay, what we have here is the um, Seabot, which is an underwater remote operated vehicle, and um, it's a group project for ECTI 350 uh, for University of Wollongong. And there's a group of eight of us that have all contributed in some way to this project over the last semester. And so, if you have a look in the water here, this is our little beastie, it's called the Seabot, and our company we formed basically, or pseudo company is uh, Eco Coast Engineering and the task brief was to provide some form of uh, device that used mechanical and software um, components in order to um, deliver a product that was ready for market that could be used to better the marine environment and so we've gone with this product which is um, as I said an underwater remote operated vehicle it allows us to uh, control uh, using uh, top side um, set of controls up here with joysticks and uh, video display through a camera back to the top and control thruster so I can turn the unit around uh, left, right, forward, back I can take it up I can take it down so forth and the whole idea is that you can manoeuvre this um, this little bloke around under the water and you've got a uh, GoPro uh, camera at the front with video feed back through HDMI and um, <coughs> displaying on the, on the front here. So the idea is that researchers can gather data and investigate uh, fish and marine spatial environments and dynamics of you know, fish behaviour so forth, whatever, without the human interaction and without also without um, sometimes you know, you're limited with divers how long they can spend in the water or if it's a polluted area or an oil spill or dangerous or whatever it is. So this, this sort of uh, benefits those things and also avoids all your oh and uh, problems. So at the heart of it we've got um, Arduino uh, microcontrollers and um, we're, um, we're sending signals from the bottom back through Cat5 cable to the top. Um, on board we have um, some sensory circuits, which are a temperature sensor, a pressure sensor, and a gyroscope, which gives us our compass, digital compass heading, our um, our pan and our tilt. So we've got all that feedback that comes back to an LCD display on the surface, and the user can utilise that data to control the control the vehicle as well as the video feed itself. Uh, as for motors, we have five thrusters which are bilge pump inserts so they're already sealed for the water because they're bilge pumps for underwater and instead of the impeller we've taken the casing off and removed the impeller and we've um, machined up a uh, we've, ma we've machined up a uh, adapter brass piece with a a, uh, a four mil thread on the end in order to um, on a 50mm uh, three blade propeller. So we've got five of those. One on top for up and down, so dive and surface. So if I push up now, the unit comes up. Okay, a bit slow because we've got, uh, got a fair bit of lead on there because of the displacement of the hull. It's quite it's quite large. It probably wasn't necessary to have it so large, but um, we have to cater to that. And um, then we've got uh, so down, push it down, goes pretty quick down, <laughs> and then I've got left and right, so I've got motors on the side offset from each other, and they both go in opposing directions, uh, in the same direction but opposing angles, so it can turn, and forward, you've got two, forward and back we have two thrusters at the back, so they both power at the same time, and everything comes back via a tether, out the back, sealed, Sickle flexed up, comes all the way back uh, to the surface because you can't get radio frequency through water, so you can't do it wireless. So we've done it that way. And as I said, we've got to, also we've got two lights on the front, uh, which are LED um, high um, bright high high lumi, uh, high high capacity. I can't think of. It. The word, but anyway, alright. <laughs> too tired, too tired doing all the work. <laughs> Not all the work, but everyone's, everyone's been doing it. 
But uh, they, they're, they're bright leads, that's what I was trying to say, they're bright, right? And um, sometimes, this is just to demonstrate over 10 metres, we've, we've done it for the, for the purpose of this. There's no point in us getting a 40 or 50 metre tether um, when, when we're only demonstrating it over, over uh, this trade fair. So what we're going to, what, what he's capable of doing is you know, going up to say 100 feet or 30 metres and um, that's quite feasible with a unit of this size and these materials and with a longer tether obviously. So, um, for the electronic control, at the moment we have, we, ha we have it set up here with a keypad and the way that's been programmed is that we punch in a number and it sets uh, the speed via pulse width modulation. So pulse width modulation, we're selecting a certain um, value out of uh, the, the full capacity of the motor. It goes through um, motor controllers um, and so that's a good way of you know, controlling things, you want to go slow, push one, you want to go fast, push nine, or anywhere in between. Uh, the problem we had was, the last moment, we had it all working in the lab, and um, we just changed power supplies, and made a bit of a mistake, and didn't turn the dial down, and we cooked a couple of our motor controllers with a few too many amps. So, rather than um, let it beat us, what we did was, we rethought our whole design, and we ran extra wires back to the surface, and actually a pair for each motor and we ran it to a bank of relays at the top with uh, 10 relays, five, uh, five pairs for forward and reverse and we've set it up with our micro controller, uh, uh, sorry our micro switches on our uh, joysticks in order for us to um, be able to control those relays and control power. So we have here 12 volt battery bank, we have three in parallel and we just have a multimeter hooked in here telling us our, um, our voltage reading at the moment so that we're able to uh, yeah, keep an eye on it, make sure it's going alright and switch to alternative power if we need to and then we have a fourth one which we're actually using for the, um, the coils on the relays so it's just separated from the motors itself um, Our HDMI feed comes in through the front, goes in, comes up onto our uh, LCD display, uh, the screen on the back uh, we have a switch on the front for our lights and we have um, our uh, LCD screen which displays our um, information of our speed when that was set up. So all in all it's a fun little project. We're hoping that um, everyone else has a bit of, bit of fun with it. I might get it out of the ladder there. Turn it around, bring it up to the surface. We're all just like big kids now, we all want to have a go. Yeah, don't know what I'm doing here. Anyway, we're hoping to get it back and get it into the ocean and hopefully um, film a few fish. You know, maybe some dolphins and uh, maybe even a grain earth shark or two. But um, anyway, I hope you like our project and um, we'll. Uh, there we go. Thanks, guys.